in first lecture we saw the marking scheme of this subject ati as well as the syllabus the total five unit distribution so today we'll start our first topic <coughs> that is unit number 1 So as you can see, this is the lab manual handbook, which is provided by MSBT itself. The entire syllabus is covered in this handbook. I'm going to share you this handbook to you. And almost all the questions in the exam are asked through this handbook. So this is handbook on emerging trends in electronics. This is the syllabus. Our first unit is advanced processor. What are the main key points that we are going to study here are advances in processor architecture, then Arduino, Arduino IDE, Arduino interfacing, and ARM. This unit is generally for 12 marks. 12 questions out of 70 questions, 16 marks, 16 questions are asked out of the 70 questions in theory board examination. So the main thing, the main thing in processor is that for which application, which processor or controller you will select. So there is a processor selection criteria for any application. So when you are developing one digital system, you need to first of all select the processor which is suitable for your application. If suppose your application is a home light automation, the application is very simple. So you will not go for the ARM processor. What you will do, you can choose Arduino board, you can choose a PIC controller or normally your 89C5 or microcontroller can also be used there. So depending upon application, which processor you will select. So there is one processor selection criteria. So processor selection criteria is performance. Means what? What kind of architecture is possessed by the processor? If application is high-end application, then you will require the high-end processor. So what is exactly mean by high-end processor? So high-end processor means which actually uses the superscalar architecture or the pipelining architecture. See. Pipelining and superscalar means what? It can process multiple tasks at the same time, execution of multiple tasks at the same time. Okay. So the performance speed of processor is dependent primarily on its architecture and its silicon design. So whatever application you, you are having, accordingly that, select the best suitable per, uh, processor so that processor selection is mainly based on the performance of the processor if processor can operate at higher gigahertz frequency so obviously the speed of execution of instruction will be fast again uh, your uh, what you can say if clock speed is slow the execution is slow so you can use that processor for smaller application again that processor can be manufactured using assembly technology assembly means your uh, system uh, uh, surface mount technology so using that SMT devices, you can uh, manufacture your processor and accordingly your application is developed. Okay. So just going for the performance, there are other factors also there that you can choose that factors for selection the processor. The second factor is power. So what is happening? As the number of input output devices connected to the processor increases, the number of pin configurations increases. Hence, previously 805 on microcontroller has 32 input output pin. Then PIC controller has more number of ports. Six ports are there, so obviously number of pins increases. Then you can go for your uh, Atmega controller, your ARM controller. So nowadays around 
more than 100 input output pins are there to a single processor correct so as the number of components increases the component density also increases see chip size is same but the components fitted in that chip that density is increased so as density is increased obviously the power requirement of that processor also increases means what in previous days 2000 mAh battery was sufficient for a mobile phone to operate it for two to four days huh? nowadays the processor are so high end that 600 6000 mAh battery is a mobile mobile battery 6000 mAh chi hai milliampere power still it is not sufficient for a single day because the number of features are increased the processor capacity is increased so due to this as the clock cycle is very high means what the frequency of that clock cycle is very high so number of tasks executed per seconds are very high so because of that the power consumption is very high hence the what you can say battery requirement of that system is also high so higher clock implies faster charge and discharge cycle leading to more power consumption baka eka second madhe number of oscillation jasta zale manje tumhi power jasta consume karta hai ata power jasta consume keli to obviously power dissipation jasta hoil power dissipation jasta zala tar tumchi heating ji ahe processor ji ti jasta pramanat hoil so you can technically say that frequency scaling means reducing the clock frequency of processor depending upon load and voltage scaling means what varying voltage based on load can help in achieving the lower power uses so what you can do for reducing that power consumption the frequency scaling technique can be used or the voltage scaling technique can be used okay so these techniques reduces the power consumption and it can improve the battery performance as well okay so power is also an important factor which kind of application is there the size of the application if size of the application is small so you cannot use larger battery size so as battery size reduces obviously you cannot use the processor which consumes more power you will go for the processor which consumes less power okay so it depends again processor selection power requirement is also important factor next factor is memory usually a designer makes the decision to use internal or external memory after they define the required amounts of code space and data memory so generally internal memory is cost effective type of memory see uh, your 8051 internal memory is of 4 kilobyte okay so in that 4 kilobyte you can load your program and you can use some variables for storing purpose means you can save some data memory also okay so designer must determine the future growth possibilities and whether there is an upgrade path to microcontroller with larger core space suppose your application is huge so for that huge application your program code will be huge so to store that program inside that processor you will require the larger memory so obviously for larger application larger internal memory processor is also required this is important thing correct <clears throat> so if the processor is having less internal memory to store that program your processor must support the external memory as well manje tumhi tala external memory connect karun pan tyacha madhe data store karu shakta so asha type cha processor tumhi select karu shakta tya velela then next factor is peripheral seat so it means that every system design needs apart from processor many other peripheral input output operations khup sare input output devices ala connect karnachi garaj padte so since in an embedded system almost all, almost all the processors used are system on chip acha embedded system madhe system on chip ch sagya prakar che devices apan use karto tyacha reason kay ahe ki jevda processor cha jawal dusri ic asel तेवड़ा डेटा ट्रांसफर रेट हा जाता है सीस्टीम का लैग कमी है सीस्टीम का परफॉर्मन्स वाढ़ है मेनी 
other input output devices are there which are usually connected to the processor so depending upon application how many input output devices you are going to connect to that processor depending upon that that processor is selected suppose one processor is there which is very fast which has high internal memory which has low power consuming capability all these features are okay but still it has only 16 input output pins so there is a limitation of connection of hardware to that system hence peripheral set is also an important thing along with these other factor how many number of input output devices you can connect to that system this is also an important thing then next point is operating voltage see if the system is mobile system mobile system means what you are carrying from one point to another point okay so you cannot directly uh, every time plug that system to ac main supply for the powering purpose you are using the battery so if you are using the battery means what suppose that battery is of 12 volt so your processor must have operating voltages between 0 to 12 volt so that that processor can be powered up and it can be operated if suppose your battery is of 5 volt and for operation purpose your processor requires 12 volt of power supply so two other features are very good but if your processor even cannot run itself it cannot run the system jasa aple two wheeler petrol var chalte ani tumhi tacha taki madhe pani otlo tar ti chalel ka nahi tisa mileage chane pickup chane power chane sagle goshti changle varun pan petrol os takav lagel na aple tacha madhe similarly tumhi battery kunti use karta त्या बॅटरीवर तुमचा प्रोसेसर रन होतो की नाही हे पण चेक करणे काम आहे ओके सो ऑपरेटिंग वोल्टेजेस इज ऑल्सो अन इम्पॉर्टंट फॅक्टर ओके सो मेनी अदर प्रोसेसर आर देअर विच जनरली वर्क ऑन टू टू फायव्ह वोल्टेजेस ओके वन पॉइंट एट वोल्ट थ्री पॉइंट थ्री वोल्ट ओके मीन्स इफ सपोज इट इज ऍक्सेसिंग द एक्सटर्नल मेमरी सो प्रोसेसर जनरली supplies the voltage of 3.3 volt to that memory chip also so your processor must operate on that volt then and then it can operate the other peripheral devices okay so li and batteries are generally used for powering the processor then the specialized processing unit so apart from the core the core manje kay jo actual tumcha alu asto jo execution karto task ka so apart from this core presence of various coprocessors and specialized processing unit can help achieving necessary processing performance so these specialized processing units can be floating point coprocessor so this can be connected to the processor as well then the graphic processing unit jala apan gpu asa pan mhanto correct so tumhi gpu aikle asti so these gpus can also be connected to the processor so processor must have compatibility with them okay jasa apan mhanto ki ekada person jaya market madhe mobile phone ghena sathi jato ta ata tumcha tumhala maiti hai ki pubg ha ek khup changla paddhatiya game ahe jo tumhi mobile madhe install karta to pubg changla prakar cha performance konta phone var dil jasa graphic card khup changla paddhatiya jasa gpu khup changla ahe tya phone cha tyache varti games khup changla paddhatiye वापरले जातात किंवा चालतात तर मॅली हा प्रोसेसर तुम्ही ऐकलेला असेल मॅली नावाचा जीपीयू डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दी प्रोसेसर देर आर मेनी को प्रोसेसर आर ऑल्सो देअर विच कॅन बी इंटरकनेक्टेड युअर इफ युअर प्रोसेसर इज व्हेरी गुड बट फॉर युअर सिस्टीम देर आर रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ मोर दॅन वन प्रोसेसर सो दॅट प्रोसेसर विच यू आर युझिंग मस्ट बी कम्पॅटेबल विथ अदर co processors as well okay so this floating point co processor fpc you can say okay it is also one kind of co processor gpu that is graphic processing unit then digital signal processor see digital signal processor where it is used whenever you are processing the audio and video the processor which actually processes audio video that processors are dsp processor digital signal processor means in your cd player dvd player your uh, mp3 player mp4 player or home theater generally dsps are used along with your microcontroller so dsp generally processes that audio and video okay and then 
your processor system processor generally controls all other activities okay so these co processor or specific processor also interface with your normal processor so your normal processor must be compatible with this co processors okay and finally the most important thing is price what is the price of your processor which you are choosing suppose tumhi khup chan prakar cha setup banavla hai खूब चांगले चांगले त्याच्यामध्ये हार्डवेअर इन्स्टॉल केलेले आहे पण तुमचा प्रोसेसर जो तुम्ही युज करताय तो किती हाय एंड असला पण तिथे ऍक्च्युअल प्राईस किती आहे मार्केटमध्ये किती प्राईस जो अवेलेबल असणार आहे दिस इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टंट फॅक्टर फॉर सिलेक्टिंग द प्रोसेसर ओके म्हणजे तुम्हाला रिक्वायरमेंट अशी आहे की सगळ्यात कमी कॉस्ट मध्ये ती सिस्टीम बनली पाहिजे तुम्ही काय करणार तुम्ही काय करणार तो प्रोसेसर असा सिलेक्ट करणार की त्याच्यामध्ये तुमची कॉस्ट सेव्हिंग झाली पाहिजे बरोबर काही अप्लिकेशन असे असतात की तिथे कॉस्ट कडे बघितलं जात जसं की जसं आपण म्हणतो की हार्ड रिअल टाइम सिस्टीम जे आपण एम्ब्रॉइडरी सिस्टीम मध्ये शिकलो होतो हार्ड रिअल टाइम सिस्टीम त्या हार्ड रिअल टाइम सिस्टीम मध्ये आपल्याला आउटपुट शी घेण्यात येणं असतं कॉस्ट किती आहे सिस्टीमला ते खूप लेस वर्दी थिंग आहे बरोबर आपण कॉस्ट कितीही खर्च करायला तयार असतो पण सिस्टीम सिक्युअर असली पाहिजे हार्ड रिअल टाइम सिस्टीम अशा वेळेस कॉस्ट कडे किंवा प्राईस कडे आपण बघत नाही अशा वेळेस आपण परफॉर्मन्स बघतो but sometime you go for the price matter okay so asha kai functions tumhala pratyek vela pahije asta ki te kamit kami price madhe available asnar ahe jase ki apan kutli gosht market madhe purchase karal jato sagle features patun ma shevti apan isarto price kiti ma te budget madhe asel tar tumhi te select karta barobar so these are the seven important parameters correct that you select that you C for selecting any processor. So that seven parameters are performance, power, memory, peripheral set, operating voltages, specialized processing unit, and price. Now we'll see the architectures of processor. So generally, RISC and CIS, these two type of architectures are there that every processor can be composed of. so risk architecture means reduced instruction set computer so reduced instruction set computer means what this processor has very less number of instructions for execution and that number of instructions are reduced in size so the more emphasis is on hardware rather than software this is the disadvantage of risk architecture actually so a single chip processor need not be same as a, as the optimal architecture for the multi chip processor so their argument was subsequently supported by the results of processor design project undertaken by the post graduate class of barclays which incorporated incorporated the reduced instruction set architecture so from barclay university actually the first risc architecture was invented so this design of risc was much simpler than the this processor so risc i instruction set differed from the mini computer like cisc instruction set used on commercial microprocessor so when initially cisc architecture complex instruction set architectures were invented due to some disadvantages the risc architecture is invented okay so what are the main features of risc architecture reduced instruction set computer so 32 bit instruction size format is introduced in risc but in cisc the different set of formats are there means 8 bit instruction was there 16 bit instruction was there 32 32 bit instruction was there load store architecture is used in the risc architecture load store means at the simultaneously you are loading the content from memory to the processor and at the same time you can load the output of previous instruction to the you can store that uh, result to the memory so load store architecture is supported by the risc large memory bank is provided by the risc 32 bit register ji large memory bank hi provide karta risc architecture then hardware instruction decode logic okay pipeline execution pipeline execution what i told 
that many instructions can be executed simultaneously that is nothing but the pipeline huh? like uh, suppose three pipes are there from one tank to another tank so water will go or pass from first tank to second tank through three pipes means three instructions can be executed at the same time so that is nothing but the pipelining in processor we generally it is called as a pipelining then single cycle execution as we saw that fixed 32 bit instruction size is fixed because of that most of the instructions are single cycle execution instruction manje eka cycle madhe purna instruction hi execute hot aste so these are the major advantages of risk architecture so risk the advantages are processor size is smaller shorter development time system to short development time shorter hoto high performance and with ever increasing complexity the performance is also high so these are the major three advantages are there for risk architecture there are some disadvantages also where you can use this risk application risk application are video processing image processing telecommunication so here you can use the <coughs> risk architecture microcontrollers then next is cisc architecture cisc means complex instruction set computer so the full name of cisc architecture is complex instruction set computer okay so unlike to risk what are the differences between risk and cisc so cisc is emphasis in emphasis on hardware and on risk emphasis is on software actually cisc has disadvantage that multi execution cycle instructions are there manje ek instruction execute karala multiple cycles lagtat त्याची इन्स्ट्रक्शन साईज ही सेम नसते जसं की रिस्क मध्ये थर्टी टू बीट ची इन्स्ट्रक्शन साईज असते फिक्स फॉर्मॅट मध्ये पण सिस्क मध्ये तसं नसतं त्यामुळे काय होतं की एक इन्स्ट्रक्शन लवकर एक्झिक्यूट होते एक इन्स्ट्रक्शन स्लोली एक्झिक्यूट होते त्याच्यामुळे पाईपलाईनिंग जी आहे ती सिस्क आर्किटेक्चर मध्ये चांगल्या पद्धतीने इम्प्लिमेंट करता येत नाही रिस्क मध्ये ती चांगल्या पद्धतीने इम्प्लिमेंट करता येत सो इन सिस्क मोर एम्फेसिस ऑन हार्डवेअर इन रिस्क मोर एम्फेसिस इज ऑन सॉफ्टवेअर cisc is includes multi clock complex instruction multi clock manje ek instruction execute karala multiple cycles lagta here in risc single clock reduce instructions are there means one instruction is executed in single cycle so for 10 instruction 10 cycles will be required so obviously the speed of execution is faster hence you can say that cisc sorry risc processors are faster as compared to the cisc processor then cisc is memory to memory instructions are there and in risc register to register instructions are there cisc small code size is there and for risc large code size is there see as you can see emphasis is on hardware means what your software development is easy but your hardware development is complex ha ah, because of that program se jo code ahe to chota asto pan hardware incorporation augad ahe ithe emphasis is on software manje program chi size mothi hai ani hardware simple ahe so because of this this risk having more advantages over cisc काय होतं की हार्डवेअर तुम्ही कशा पद्धतीने कनेक्ट करा प्रोग्रामिंगच्या स्किल्स द्वारे तुम्ही ते हार्डवेअर चेंज करू शकता ऍप्लिकेशनच्या दृष्टीने पण तेच सिस्क मध्ये काय होतं तुमचं आउटपुट बदललं की हार्डवेअर तुम्हाला चेंज करावं लागतं त्याच्यामुळे जे काही कॉस्टिंग आहे ती सिस्क मायकल कंट्रोलरला जास्त पडते सिस्टीम डेव्हलपमेंटसाठी रिस्क पेक्षा ओके इन सिस्क ट्रान्झिस्टर युज फॉर स्टोरिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स इन्स्ट्रक्शन ओके
Idris spends more transistors on memory registers. Data is stored in the form of registers, you can see. Okay. So this is a risk architecture, and this risk processors we are going to see in this unit only. That's why the simple explanation of risk architecture is there here. So as I told, pipelining means what? Execution of multiple instruction at the same time. So here we'll study the pipelining. So pipelining is a technique for implementing instruction level parallelism with within a single processor. So pipelining attempts to keep every part of processor busy with some instruction by dividing incoming instruction into series of sequential steps performed by the different processor units with different parts of instruction process processed in parallel. Pipelining is a simple pattern to explain. Pipelining is a very Suppose you don't have a lot of work. The first thing is that you have a lot of material in your book. And the second thing is that you have a phone call. Right? तर ज्यावेळेस तुम्ही लिहित असता लिहिता लिहिता एक कॉल वाजला तुम्ही फोन कडे बघता पण फोन कडे बघता बघता खाली तुम्ही काहीतरी रायटिंग मटेरियल ते राईट करत असतात आणि तेच सेकंड गोष्ट की फोन कॉल उचलल्यानंतर समोरचा पर्सन बोलेपर्यंत कधी कधी आपण पुढे एक वाक्य लिहितो म्हणजे काय की आपण दोन कामं सायमल्टेनियसली करतो बरोबर म्हणजे आपण जे काही वर्क आहे ते आपलं पार्ट मध्ये डिवाइड केलं आणि ते पार्ट पार्ट एक्झिक्यूट करतो फोन कॉल उचलला तिकडे कानाला लावेपर्यंत आपण खाली लिहितोय म्हणजे आपला एक हात दुसरं काम करतोय दुसरा हात दुसरं काम करतोय बरोबर सिमिलरली कुठलीही इन्स्ट्रक्शन एक्झिक्यूट होताना कुठलीही इन्स्ट्रक्शन एक्झिक्यूट होताना ती पार्ट पार्ट मध्ये इन्स्ट्रक्शन एक्झिक्यूट होते म्हणजे काय इन्स्ट्रक्शन पहिले फेच होते मेमरी मधून मेमरी मधून प्रोसेसर मध्ये घेतली जाते मग इन्स्ट्रक्शन डिकोड होते डिकोड होते म्हणजे काय की तिचा अर्थ काय आहे आणि त्या इन्स्ट्रक्शनचं फंक्शन काय ते डिकोड केलं जातं मग त्याच्यानंतर त्या इन्स्ट्रक्शनला लागणारा जो काही डेटा आहे रिसोर्स आहे तो रेजिस्टर मधून घेतला जातो मग तो डेटा आणि इन्स्ट्रक्शन ही एलयू मध्ये एक्झिक्यूट होते ओके आणि जर त्याच्यासाठी काही मेमरी मेमरी लागत असेल तर मेमरी अलोकेशन होईल आणि फायनली रिझल्ट हा स्टोअर होतो रेजिस्टर मध्ये म्हणजे एक इन्स्ट्रक्शन सहा पार्ट मध्ये डिवाइड केली सो लाईकवाईज सिक्स इन्स्ट्रक्शन एक्झिक्यूट कॅन बी एक्झिक्युटेड ऍट दी सेम टाइम हाऊ आय एक्सप्लेन 